This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. candy bars, 15 cent hamburgers. Hamburgers. When a dollar went a long way, and so did 24 hours. The 60s and the 70s, dwelling place of the lost generation. We who grew up in this era had no real heroes. Our role models came from the imaginations of others. Our meager lives were formed by and revolved around weekly installments of our favorite TV programs. Welcome to a place that your parents didn't understand. A place that exists somewhere between the forefront of recollectable memory and the edge of everyday thought. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome home. Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. We're here uh, with uh, Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. I'm Mark Schmidbauer, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television, that, that kind of age when, uh, I don't know. Uh, when we grew up. When we, when we grew up. There's, that's probably the best way to say it. It's the easiest way. And um, today we're going to talk about probably one of, uh, certainly for 60s television, um, and possibly for all television, one of the uh, biggest shows, uh, a phenomena, if not a rating success, uh, the original Star Trek series. Now, uh, we want to say first off, this is not going to be about uh, Next Generation, although we may mention it, or, or the movies. This is 60s and 70s television, so we're only going to cover the original series and, of course, the animated series. Now, uh, Star Trek was on from uh, 66, 69. The uh, 78 episodes uh, created by uh, Gene Roddenberry, who called it the Wagon Train to the Stars. It's a show he thought when uh, it was a central cast, the uh, same cast every week, and they'd go out and fix things. And that's basically what the show was. And uh, was on for three seasons, mostly due to a huge letter campaign that went on at the end of the second season, uh, unheard of of the industry before. And, but it finally was uh, canceled in 69, uh, and uh, there was the animated series uh, starring the original cast doing all the roles, and um, James Doohan and, um, and Major, Major Barrett Roddenberry basically doing all the other voices other than uh, the main <laughs> cast members. And uh, then after a, a failed attempt at a new series in the uh, mid-70s that never really got off the ground at Paramount, Finally, we saw Star Trek The Motion Picture, which wasn't that big a success. Well, it made a huge amount of money, but uh, Trek fans still consider it eh. And, of course, there were the other uh, four movies, and, of course, now we have Star Trek The Next Generation. And uh, in addition to the huge amount of merchandising and um, uh, the conventions and the Trekkies, there's uh, at least 60 novels out there now. So it's certainly something worth, that's going to be around for, well, well, well into the 21st century, I'd say. Anyways. At least that's the hope. Right. <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about today, and I'll uh, turn the, uh, the podium over to Wilbert uh, with his uh, first point for the evening. Well, let's see. Um, as far as the show goes, I, I like the, 
the way they always seem to change uniforms through the um, through the series, like the first episode, or the first. Um, well, we could talk about the first episode, really, right. the the cage episode where. Um, you didn't really have Captain Kirk, you had Commander Pike yeah. and mm -hmm. all the other people. They had the lovely, the lovely turtleneck uniforms. Right. <laughs> which, which you saw a little bit. You saw a little bit back in, like, um, where No Man Has Gone Before. Yeah, well, that was, like, Wh Which, first. pretty much, yeah, was the second pilot for the show. Yeah. Well, see, originally, I mean, when the, uh, the command color, the, the yellow, was supposed to come out green. Mm. That was the big thing, and they saw it on... Um, they saw it on their uh, on dailies or whatever, and I guess the 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 story is that uh, the guys who actually developed the film for the studio thought it was supposed to be yellow, so they went in and they screwed around with the developing to make it come out yellow, and so they said, well, I guess we'll have to make the costumes yellow now because we have this one episode and we don't want to screw up the continuity. And then at the same time, I think that messed with um, Spock's facial color. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Which just made him interesting all around too. Well, I think they had to take into consideration, too, budget. Right. Truck was not a big budget show. No, it was show. not. No, it was no. not. For, for its time, it wasn't, you know, in today's dollars or, you know, compared to just a general, even a sitcom today, it doesn't, yeah. they, don't, they don't spend that much money. But for its time, they spent a good deal, probably a lot more money than Paramount wanted to, but... Which is probably one of the reasons they decided to cancel it. Right, it's like, it's, the ratings are, eh, and uh, we're spending a lot of money on it, and we're not very happy. And did they know there were kids out there? Like, oh boy, Star Trek! Yay. I get to stay up late and watch Star Trek Thursday. Come on, Dad, Star Trek! <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Well, let's see. Um, I had a um, a question, just generally about, you know, considering the third, the twenty third century, and all this. I mean, I was always wondered who would join secure, who would join Starfleet or security, really. I mean, either either way. I mean, you've got you've got an organization that at peacetime loses a lot of people, a lot of people die in this show. I mean, in the first three seasons, over 90 crewmen were killed. Most of them were red-shirted security guys, and um, expendables. <laughs> I mean, according according to one of the novels. Um, the Enterprise is like the first starship that made it back <laughs> and like, after its first mission. And that's what they're saying. It's like that it's just like uh, there was, the, they would either get blown up or they'd find some civilization that would take them hostage or, or it would be this uh, utopian civilization where they say, well, we just don't feel like leaving. So, uh, so I always wondered, you know, it's like what, what type of thing would, would uh, Starfleet use to like recruit people to get in to an, to an organization where it's like, you know, they free it, travel. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, if, if you figure one ship, ninety people got killed in three years, you know, you figure all the starships free travel with risks. <laughs> lots, lots well, risks. They, they don't, they didn't know that though. See, they're back on Earth when at well, the beginning I, of the five-year mission, you're looking at. Come out, come with us. See the stars. See billions and billions of planets out here. <laughs> Meet new and new. They didn't even know about new. Well. Did they? No. Well, about? yes, because they had Vul Spock. And Spock. They knew about Vulcans. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah, they. they uh, there were there were races already. Well, they knew the races. about the Vulcans. Right. But they didn't know really about very many others. At least not when they first started right. off. Right. So, um, it's I guess the look at the poss we could we've already met one new kind of. <laughs> See what else we can do. New kind of being out here. There could be other aliens out there. Well, but I uh, with us to explore, you know. Well, I, I, but I got to believe there's like, you know, investigative reporters in the 23rd century, you know. <laughs> They're like finding out about this and saying, what's the deal with this? And they go to the chief of Starfleet and he says no comment. But, you know, I, and I, the way I figured it is just like the 23rd century must be incredibly boring like for Geraldo, most people. Geraldo, sea of tranquility. Yeah, I mean. We know this. <laughs> 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 you know, it's just like uh, most of the time you see, when you see rare glimpses of the civilians, it's just like, oh my, what a boring existence. These guys, oh, they go to a cocktail party or they go to something and it's always like, yikes, what a boring lifestyle. So it's, that's, as far as I can figure, that's the only reason that people join Starfleet. What is the condition of Earth at this time? It's is like it a so utopia. Is that you want to leave? No, it's like a utopia. Well, what is, what is this, you know, heaven is a place where nothing ever happens. Yeah, so. well, that's true. Well, so well, there, were, there was nothing else, I guess, really to explore on Earth, so the stars were about like they are now. The, the next 
the, the great frontier. The vinyl frontier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just Which do things to find out. Well, that, well that, that brings up another question. I always wondered, why is Kirk like the only sane and or competent captain in Starfleet? <laughs> Every other captain we ever see is like nuts or he's <laughs> the an idiot. The question I have is, why is Kirk a captain? <laughs> ah, okay. Why is he, what makes him? Is that... I get, mean, get up and go kind of guy. He basically yeah. has no morals. But he has that love <laughs> well, of every time enterprise. He, <laughs> yes, but every time he hits a new planet, it's like, yeah, let's go check out the babes and see. Well, but that's probably, you know, I, I, I would think Starfleet would kind of... Are there no women kinda, on, the, on the ship? Kind of say, you know, uh, say, why don't you go do that, you know? <laughs> why don't you go check out the women <laughs> on this planet? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, get out there and fraternize. Yeah. But, yeah. If, Explore but, those new friends no, here right, to remember. the fullest. <laughs> you know, There's the, uh, the prime directive, you can't interfere. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, well, can't interfere with out, their culture and civilization, but with, you, you can, can go out with the, the women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my impression of, okay, like, uh, I'm not a Trekkie, but my impression of Captain Kirk is going from planet to planet, like bar hopping. Yeah, yeah, because it's, you know, it, it's, again, you know, like the rest of the 23rd century, like I said, is very boring, so it's like, uh, Kirk, you know, bopping into town. Ooh, a Starfleet guy. You know, it's like this is. Hey, I mean, Starfleet. this would. Yeah, this would be like you know. Uh, I'm a. I don't know. Uh, astronaut or a or a uh, race car driver or something. This is the only really risky profession left. So, so women are just like all over him. Well, it's not such a risk because he always sends the guys down in the red shirts first to get blown up. They don't know that though. He's gonna go. They don't know that though. You know. Maybe I've got a heavy cruiser class. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so, a captain. <laughs> but you see all these other guys that are just like, you know, that are nuts. You know, it's just like, what, what Tracy, Captain Tracy, he was nuts. Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples. Decker. <laughs> Decker, oh, really real nuts. nuts. Real nuts and major time overacting. I think the only person ever on the show who overacted more than Shatner did. Shatner <laughs> acted. Overacted. Oh. <laughs> overacted. Just like everything was just that was acting. the most the most okay. <laughs> everything he said was always like the most important thing ever said in the yeah. history. Yeah. Oh, it's over here. Oh, what do we do? And my ship. My ship. <laughs> oh, what do I do? I've lost my ship. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah, you know, and I always wondered, um, you know, McCoy has that little um, medical bag he goes down on uh, planets. And it probably only holds like four or five different things for his hypo, and yet he always has the right drug. I want to know what the deal is. He has like that universal antitoxin he throws in, in case Kirk gets bit by a snake or something, oh, or a mugato, or <laughs> you know, he has like the triox compound, and that's yeah. and that, that's about all you ever see in there. But and yet it's like, oh, I just happen to have this in my bag, and put that in, and you put that, and it's like. Why did he go to sp Why did he go into space anyway? Because all he did was complain. Complain. Oh, I'd rather be back on Earth. I'd rather be a country veterinarian. Well, the, I'd rather go well, out and shoot horses, anything but this. Well, the, well, the, the thing they, they say in, the, in like novels and stuff is he was divorced, and he had a bad marriage. Oh, so, didn't so he left. the alimony. <laughs> so I didn't want to pay, yeah, didn't want to pay okay, the alimony. He's, he's, he's Sorry, a I'm out of space. Can't, uh, uh, that's the only job that probably paid enough <laughs> to cover that alimony check. In the 23rd century. wanted half of everything. Right. <laughs> and these guys, you know... Uh, just didn't make a lot being a regular doctor. Do, do, do Starfleet people like pay taxes or? Uh, I, I always wonder well, how much money they made. They pay taxes in the 23rd century. Are there really taxes? Well, I think the the thing to consider there is, you know, it's like they must have some sort of credit system, you know, like uh, like, like a voucher. Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like an an ID card, you know. Because they must have like some sort of card with like their retina scan and their current voice credit limit and voice that, print and all yeah. that stuff, you know. But I figure like in the 23rd century, you know, like in Columbus, Ohio, in the 23rd century, though 315 will still not be fixed yet. So, <laughs> so, so we'll still need to have taxes for stuff like that, you know. Well, anyways. Um, oh, I, oh, go ahead. You have a. No, I was just going to say that by then it'll probably be like an airway system, so they'll probably be. <laughs> other problems that right yeah involved. but they're gonna need some sort of taxes and no one here will still know how to drive right <laughs> well then it'll be worse because you'll be flying and <laughs> yeah. different they'll levels be like 3d of... accidents i don't worry about it. i'm not gonna be here <laughs> well it'd be interesting to find out okay <laughs> anyways um these the 70s series that that never occurred okay 
this to give you an idea that what basically happened was Paramount, like, um, uh, debated for years whether they were going to do another one. It went on and on and on. They were going to do a series. No, they're going to do a TV movie. No, they're going to do a motion picture. And it went back and forth among this. And I think I saw a reference, like, I think in 73 that they were talking about it. I mean, that was like during the animated series that they were talking about doing another live action thing. And finally, basically when Star Wars came out, uh, Paramount said, now we're ready to do it. You know, now that everybody else is doing science fiction, we'll do this. And so they're going to do a series. And it's uh, basically a lot of the stuff if you, that you see in the next generation, some of the stuff has kind of, they kind of moved those concepts over. And the on, but the only major changes was that Spock wasn't there because Nimoy didn't want to do it at that point. They weren't going to pay him enough money, so they had this other Vulcan named Zahn. But other than that, it's basically the cast of the first movie, like Decker and Ilea and all that. So, I mean, at, based at that time, do you think that 70s series would have worked as well as the motion pictures well, Another have? reason they probably didn't do it is they did have the animation going, and animation's a lot cheaper. Well, I mean, this is like by 77. <clears throat> well, that was running in reruns then. Right. Right. Well, but, so I mean, was you know, the live they were series. probably thinking, well, you know, this will keep these will keep the Trekkies happy right. for a while. Yeah, but I mean, they were they were right on the verge of doing. It. I mean, they had sets built and costumes and all this, and they're like, you know, it's like they're just about ready to film, and it's like, ah, no, we're not going to do it. Which which is, by the way, why why the first movie cost so much money because it includes the cost of that series that was never done. Uh huh. So all the cost of those sets and costumes that were all thrown out and never used were all included in the cost of the first movie. Mm -hmm. But anyways. And the suits and everything too, right? Right. Okay. All right. Well, it could have worked. I mean, um... It would have worked as well as the movies did. Um, well, we can look at the things that... Well, that would take us off this subject. We really want to cover that. It would have worked. The Trekkies time. would have liked it. The Dyed in the Wool fans would have wanted... I don't think it would have attracted a lot of new people. Right. Because they'd be thinking of... The old sets, right. the old Trek, the 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 '60s show had very bland colors, mm -hmm. and they and um, people would still think of that. And by of course by the '70s we had all the neat the yeah. neat uh, effects started right. coming in, right. like the birth of the effects era. Mm -hmm. There, it's it's the big reason why I can't watch the old Trek unless the story is very good. Because there's no effects, basically. Uh, yeah. I'm an effects spoiled mm -hmm. person, and um, yeah, after you after you see Star Wars and F Galactica yeah. and Buck Rogers and all the other stuff from the '70s, it was just like, you know, it's like, oh, and we have this, and we have this spaceship flying through space, and it shoots in another one, and all this, and when you go back to the old show, and it's like, well, we've uh, we've got this model suspended by a string, and uh, and it's going by this big uh, ball that we've painted to look like a planet. Uh, yeah, they would have well, had to really upgrade their um, well, effects space, for the '70s space show. Space 1999 had its its. Um, popularity and it was right around I guess just before that time yeah that's true so it, it could possibly have worked it could have worked but um would, would the trek would the whole trek thing the phenomenon be going as strong now today well it would have had something else to focus on it would have it yeah it's it's debatable whether it would have worked well you'll never know right we'll never know so just, just well one. people would probably be debating about that like right. they're debating about Cla next classic, classic versus next yeah. generation. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just wanted to get an opinion on that. Um, well, you I wanted it. to. We didn't charge you. That's so right. Well, thank you it. very much. Um, I had a question. Oh, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna. Well, if you got a no, no, go let's, ahead. Let's do. Okay. I was gonna say, were there any favorite uh, favorite episodes that you might have had? Favorite characters, favorite situations, things like that. Mud. Okay. Well, we'll That's see. a lot of fun. I, I, I had made a list this afternoon of, I went through all my books and decided who my favorite guest stars were for male and female. Okay. Okay, and I wanted to get, I wanted to get yours before I, where I gave mine. Okay, my favorite, let's see. I've got like four of each to give you, so you um, can pick more than one. Well, now, I, I don't know about um, just guest stars. I mean, let's, let's, were, let's go, let's go male guest stars and female guest stars. Okay, not... Just guest stars. I was going to say, um, well, as far as characters go, now yeah. Spock, he's probably definitely a favorite character. Right, yeah. right. As far as that goes, Uhura. I, I have to admit, I looked at Uhura a lot. 
Well, who couldn't? Because look at the uniforms that right. the women had the, to wear. The mini basic, no, it's a basic cheerleader outfit. Yeah. <laughs> because it's even got the little matching bottoms. Right. With the, you know, and the go-go boots. Right. They wore go-go boots. In the 23rd century, that's a... It's like you're going to beam down to a planet in go-go boots. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Well, that's... Good to go. Yeah. I, mean, I, will say, I will say they've got them dressed a lot nicer for next generation. Yeah. Okay. Well, they've, they've learned over the years. Come on, everybody they learned over the years. Definitely learned. They, well, well, anyway, but you know, they had to sell it to the network in the 60s. You know, it's like... Uh, TNA. <laughs> yeah. But um, as far as guest stars, well, uh, one of my favorite actresses... Uh, well, you want to do male and female? Okay. Okay, male... Um, well, actors now. We can Roger C. Carmel as Harry Mudd. Yep. He's definitely a favorite. I, I have him. Um, Mark Leonard. Yep. He's uh the the, the <laughs> triple has, threat. He has played every single uh, major alien. Yeah. He has represented every single major alien race on the show of the three major. And of course, his big one was of course Sarah Spock's father. Yeah. But correct, correct. Um, Barry Atwater. Now, not a lot of people don't know about Barry. He played Surik. The oh, yeah. leader of the, oh, the, yeah. the logical Vulcans in the one episode where they had to go back in with them and uh, Abraham Lincoln, and they were up against the four worst criminals of the universe and time and all. Now, he, Barry Atwater, went on to play um, Yano Skorzeny in The Night Stalker. Oh. He was the vampire in the, oh. the Night Stalker series. That's, that's why I remember him. Um, and then, let's see. <laughs> Although he overacted, I did like William Wyndham <laughs> <laughs> as Commodore Decker. <laughs> With the big the cornucopia of right. death that came out <laughs> The huge funnel of death. <laughs> Okay, well, the only the only one I would I would uh, did well, you have any? Uh, well, Mud was my favorite. Okay. He's also the one that carried over into the animated. Yeah, he did. He he, he yep. was in one because it was another triple deal. Well, yeah. Okay, now Mud he was in he was in two of the regular series and he right. was in one animated one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't it wasn't about the triples. That's Cyrano Jones that was in the triples. That's okay. right. That's right. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, Mud's just the one that. Okay. He, you know he made the biggest impression on me. Right. He was fun. Mm hmm. He was fun. He was he was a neat character. It was fun to see him get what he deserved. Right. <laughs> you know, you felt you could feel sorry for him, but at the same time, you were like, yeah, he got it. <laughs> I'm glad he yeah. got it. <laughs> well, Hardcore fantastic. Mud. <laughs> He's a fun guy. Well, the only two I picked in, other than that were William Campbell. Uh, Trelane and or Koloth. Yeah, yeah. Who Trelane was the better of the two. A duel? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and John Colicus, ah. Hor, later of course to be what's his Baltor. name on Baltor on Galactica. Was uh, Clint Howard in one? Yes, yes he, he was. was. He was the kid with the great big head. Right, wasn't he? Was Blaylock. <laughs> Blaylock. Blaylock. Okay. Blaylock. Yeah. With the Trunya. Tr yes, the Trunya. <laughs> the the Trunya. Tr <laughs> <laughs> I okay. think I'll stay with this little yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. Man knows how to party. Okay. okay, well, that's male. Now now on to female. Female, well. I think it's funny who's been on. Joan Collins was on yep. there. That's yep. what, that's one of that, my picks. That's a funny one. That's one of my picks. It's Edith Keeler. And, of course, uh, Joan Collins has been on practically every show from the 1960s. Yeah, my goodness. She was busy. Well, then you can look back at um, William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy and all the different shows that they were on. Well, they right. did all the 50s shows. <laughs> yeah. Also, she. Right. <laughs> She's been around a long time. But then, um, okay. As far as guests, female guests, well, I can go back to another one of my favorite actresses, uh, Julie Newmar, who. Had a baby on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. that was, that was, yeah, that and she's been on every show in the 60s, too. She considered it her and McCoy's baby. Let's see, mm -hmm. our child. Our child yeah. Everybody was looking, hey, McCoy, what, we don't know about this. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Um, let's see now. Are there any other really favorite female? Well, not the names, not, what, not with names that stand out. They're in, like, characters. The... Uh, the one girl in the Gamesters on Triscalian, that was Kirk's um, chosen one. Oh, yeah. Sh Shauna, right? Okay, right. yeah, she, she kind of stood out in my mind. Well, yeah, <laughs> but not, not for her acting abilities, no, only. No, 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 no. Um, So, uh, <laughs> well, but I, I, well, here's the ones I picked out. I picked out Kim Darby as Mary, so I thought she did a pretty good job. 
Uh, I had to pick Jane Wyatt as uh, Amanda, Spock's mother. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. And um, and another dual role person, Diana Mulder, as as the two doctors, Dr. Ann Mulhall and Dr. Miranda Jones. Okay. And Miranda Jones of the two was because I was in um, Is There in Truth No Beauty with the uh, Timmy the Trash Can. The uh, <laughs> what's it? <laughs> the guy. What's his name? The um, Oh, shoot. Oh, the evil, awful alien yeah. thing that lived in the thing that if you looked at him, you would go crazy. You go crazy, yeah. yeah. It was so... Medusin. Medusin. He was a Medusin. Right. That's it. That's exactly it. was it. so ugly or whatever. Oh, hey, I forgot about one that she's not really, wasn't really considered a guest star, but then she went on, she has gone on, um, Major mm -hmm. Barrett Roddenberry herself. Mm -hmm. She was number one in the Cage episode, and then she went on to be Nurse Chapel, and now she's gone on, well, she, Nurse Chapel became whatever... Mm -hmm. She wasn't a nurse anymore. In the, the doctor. In the, in the movie, she, she became, became a doctor. doctor. And now she's playing Troy's mother. Yeah. Yes. New, new one. So she's she's just been in there. Of course, well, it doesn't hurt being the wife of the producer. producer. You know, yeah. <laughs> kind of I want point. my wife to be in it. Uh, well, we really can't say no. So, uh, dear, are you making a new series? Can I be in be it? it? <laughs> oh, okay, honey. <laughs> You do want dinner tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know. Um, well, let's see. There were other. There was. Um, I just saw one. Noticed one today that I hadn't noticed before. The guy who played um, in Dagger, Dagger of the Mind, I think. The not uh, not James Gregory. You know the episode with James Gregory where they sit in the chair and. <sighs> Mm. They, they sit in the chair and it uh, drops all the thoughts out of their mind okay. and all that. All right. The other guy, the guy that they, they beamed up to the ship, who was like his assistant, who was nuts, and that was the, the first time they ever saw him use the mind melt on the show. Okay. Is the same actor who played Captain Tracy in, another epi in a later episode. Wow. Okay. And I didn't even notice that because I, I was reading my compendium in order to talk about this show today, and I said, that's the same guy. Well, that just goes to show that they always, they, they well, there were more than just the ones that we knew about that they yeah. oh, yeah. used over and over again. Oh, yeah. Which is quite interesting. Well, so, yeah. well go ahead. Do you have any other points? I was going to. Another, um, Frank Gorshin, I think, made an interesting. Oh, there we go. Let, let this be your last episode. battlefield. Yeah. yeah. That, was, the, that uh, was an interesting one. Well, I think what Star Trek did, I mean, we'd had science fiction shows before Star Trek. Star Trek made space respectable mm -hmm. to go into and not silly. Right. And not silly to where what, what's followed since. Lost Battle in Star, space. Lo Lost in space was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it was that, silly. That wasn't sense, it wasn't silly. That was before. Right, that was, that was actually, yeah, during almost, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it was, you know, since then we've gotten more and more space shows. Right. That are, you know, serious, but human. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that was, that was the real difference of the show. But between everything else that had really come out, I mean, it had been since uh, Zone, really Twilight Zone, that was the last thing that went on before Trek that was well, you serious just the, look. You just hear the name Twilight Zone, and yeah. I think a lot of people think, too freaky for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Star Trek made science fiction to where people could sit down and watch, right. you know, everyday folks, right. watch it and then real. I'm watching science fiction. Yeah, yeah, because it really, they really could have made it, you know, on a battleship, you know, in World War II, just change the <laughs> devices, and it would have been the same story. Which is kind of what Gene wanted to do. He right. wanted to make it um, respectful. He wanted to teach lessons mm -hmm. while people were being entertained. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was one of his main um, thrusts of doing the show. Well, anyway, we think we're we're about done. So uh, we're we're getting our signal from our uh, rampant floor director. So. Uh, I think that'll that'll about do it for another exciting episode of uh, Vast Wasteland. Uh, next time, it's going to be our special holiday show. We're going to talk about all the various holiday, the Christmas shows, and all the animated stuff, and all of the variety shows and stuff that we've seen uh, all through. Uh, all through the 60s and 70s. And they and just don't make them like that. No they more. don't. Well, but we'll talk about it next time. So, for all of us at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.